Hi guys, welcome to another video. And in this video, it's gonna be a quick look at the mode dial. Uh, that's the dial that you will find on the top or side of many interchangeable lens cameras, be those mirrorless, DSLRs like we have here, and also bridge cameras as well. Now, we're not gonna go in depth on these modes on the dial. Those videos will come later as we start looking at the cameras in more detail, and also the exposure modes in more detail as well. Um, so what we'll do now, We'll have a quick look um, at the mode dial, which is on top of my DSLR here, which is a Canon 5D Mark II, and just explain what those modes are and what they may be called on other brands of camera as well. So let's take a look. Hi guys, um, in this video, as stated in the intro, we're gonna have a look at the mode dial and the different modes within that dial. Now, this is the mode dial on top of my Canon 5D Mark II. There will be some differences on your camera if you're shooting Sony, Nikon, Pentax, or maybe some other camera as well. Um, you may not have a mode dial and you may do these changes on a menu screen. So do refer to your manual if you're not sure, um, but we'll cover the mode dial on my Canon DSLR here. Now, starting off, um, we are in green square, actually called auto. And so this is where the camera does everything. So whenever a mode selection is level with a little mark on the side of the body, or in this case, because I've put a sticker over it, the edge of the sticker, that's the mode that you are in. And auto mode is auto everything. The camera here does all the heavy lifting. It determines the ISO, shutter speed, the aperture, okay, based on what it reads. And you can't change anything. It also determines which auto focus point to use. Um, it won't focus at the moment because it's pointed at a plain background, um, but it does everything for you. So next up, oh, by the way, this is gonna be handy. Um, auto mode, if you've gotta hand your camera to someone who's not familiar with them. So at least you can just point, press a button and hopefully get something rather than giving them a camera on aperture priority or manual because they're just not gonna be able to work it. So there we go. Now I'll be referring to the settings that get changed on my top LCD plate here. Please know that your camera may not have the top LCD plate and it may be all on the rear screen. Um, some cameras do, typically the prosumer and pro bodies, um, like the Canon 5D Mark II, so we'll be looking at this. Next up is the CA. Um, no, that doesn't stand for chromatic aberration in this instance. It's creative auto mode, and it gives you a little bit more creative freedom um, over automatic. You can't change the autofocus point. However, you can make changes on the rear screen based on do you want more in focus, less in focus, a faster subject you're photographing a slower subject and so forth it helps you along trying to explain some of the fundamentals as you learn never use it myself but we will take a look at this mode in future videos um, as we deal with exposure and the different modes more in more detail so we'll go on to the next one p for perfect or p for professional or p for program there you go program mode so program mode. Now we do have some creative input here. I'll just turn the backlight on. I can dial in exposure compensation, telling the camera to give me more exposure or less exposure as I please. I can change the ISO value as I please. And I can also change the auto focus point as well. Um, you can make changes to white balance to the metering modes also. So it opens up a little bit more creativity um, than auto mode but it will see you right fall back into doing an automatic job if you will if you get stuck so if you're in a situation where you don't know what the hell the exposure is or it's constantly changing then they may be a mode that may be useful for certain situations wedding photographers use program mode and um, they'll also use shutter priority and aperture priority as well you don't have to shoot in manual so next is tv now this doesn't stand for television um, sadly, you can't watch TV on your camera. Maybe in the future, who knows? Um, instead, it refers to time value for Canon. Now, on other cameras like Nikon, Sony, Pentax, maybe others, it will be an S for shutter priority. So time value, shutter priority. Okay, so I can change all aspects like the ISO, the autofocus points, um, as I wish as well. I can change exposure compensation, metering modes, all that good stuff. And what this allows me to do is dial in a predetermined shutter speed. So if I say I want it to be 160th of a second because it must be, I can't handhold any slower, you can dial that in 
and the camera will find an aperture for you. Now it's blinking at the moment on this camera because it's so dark in here and f1.8, even if I had an f1.2 lens, it would still be too dark. So that's why. But watch as I slow down that shutter speed, it will stop blinking and it will start to adjust the aperture as we go slower and slower with the shutter speed. So the camera's changing the aperture for us based on your setting on the shutter speed based on the ISO that you are at. Now next up, we'll go to aperture priority. Now flip side um, to shutter priority, we determine the aperture. We can of course dial in exposure compensation, ISO, we can change the um, autofocus point, the AF drive, the white balance metering, all of that stuff. Okay, but what we determine is the aperture. So whatever we set for the aperture stays set and the camera then determines a shutter speed based off what it's metering in front of it. Okay, through the lens metering. So as I change, you can see as I stop down, it's getting slower and slower and slower and slower and slower as we go through. So if you want creative control over your depth of field, although everything's in focus at f20, um, so we'll open that up, then you can shoot at say f1.8 or f2.8 for example, and the camera will then determine a shutter speed for you. Um, so if you don't want your aperture changing shot to shot when you're like it will do when you're in shutter priority and you want consistent depth of field if you will, um, maybe your distance isn't changing also, you're not changing your lens, your subject doesn't move, then you can set the aperture on the camera and it will do the heavy lifting for the shutter speed for you. Now on some cameras you can also tell it to go to auto ISO mode so the camera will jump up to what it feels is an appropriate ISO and give you a shutter speed reading on the base and back of that also. So we'll go back to some random ISO setting. There we go. Next up is manual mode. Dun dun dun, the big M. Manual mode. So on manual mode, you have full control over everything. You can work on some cameras in auto ISO, still in manual, so it will help you there. Um, but we determine the auto focus point. Okay, exposure compensation doesn't exist at this point because we can change the aperture and we can change the shutter speed to dial in the exposure for the scene and the photograph that we are trying to make. So full manual control. You can, of course, change white balance metering, drive, all of that good stuff as well. So it's full manual control. The nice thing about working manually, this isn't a something that you have to do. However, it does give you consistent results. Shot to shot to shot. Um, if you're in a lighting situation that doesn't change, say like studio, constant sunlight, um, constant overcast day, obviously until the day gets later, um, then your shots are consistently exposed and they're not changing on you based on the camera metering different parts of the scene, like it would in shutter priority or an aperture priority as well. Okay, so full manual control. Now in manual, we can only go as slow as 30 seconds. And to go beyond that, we need to go into bulb mode. And bulb mode basically means you will hold the shutter open for as long as you feel an exposure is necessary. Now, this isn't ideal because we could get camera shake, for example, in here. So you would actually plug in a cable release and have a switch that you lock on so you're not touching the camera and then you pop the lock off and that's end exposure at that point. And that's useful for landscapes, long exposures, starscapes and so forth where you may need longer than 30 seconds. However, quick tip, starscapes, if you start to go in 30 seconds or longer, you're going to start to get the rotation of the earth in as well. Now C1, C2 and C3 are not creative modes, they are custom modes. Some cameras will have these, some won't. The pro bodies certainly will do. And you can set presets, like Lightroom presets, think of it that way, um, against these. So for C1, I am at Kelvin white balance, which is set for flash, 125th of a second sync speed, F8 and ISO 160. This is my go-to for white seamless in this studio based on the lights that I use, the space that I'm in. So I can flick it to C1 and away I go. I can of course dial it in manually, doesn't matter. C2, I have for events, ISO 800, auto white balance, 60th of a second at F4 as a starting point. That's all just as a starting point. 
and then C3 is basically a variance on program mode, if you will, where the camera just works in auto um, ISO for me, and I can then change the aperture. So it's similar to program mode there. I have both my cameras set up to work in the same way. So that's just a quick overview of each individual mode. Your cameras may differ slightly. They may have additional modes on there. Do refer to your manuals. If you have any questions, please stick them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll be looking more closely into these modes going forward as we get into exposure and working with the camera again this is a fundamental series that we're building up getting people starting from buying the camera getting it set up starting to get used to it okay and we're going to build this up going forwards any questions drop them in the comments below and if you have any videos or content or topics if you will that you would like covering in a future video let me know down below as well and again, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we shall see you in the next video. So let's get that off 30 seconds because no one's hand holding that. There we go. All right, see you next time.